This is Dr. Alex Vasquez, and this is going to be a five-article review discussing multivitamin and multimineral supplementation. In the interest of making this audio-video presentation available on YouTube, I've had to conform to their 10-minute limitation, and thus by necessity the pace of this presentation will be faster than we might otherwise desire. Viewers and listeners who desire a second look at a slower pace can access the original 17-minute version, which is available on the website. For this video tutorial, I'm going to review five research articles which support the use of routine vitamin mineral supplementation for the purposes of health promotion and disease prevention. I've chosen these articles from among several hundred articles as representative examples of peer-reviewed medical research which serve to answer the commonly asked question, why should people take vitamin and mineral supplements? These articles discuss the use of multivitamin and multimineral supplementation in general rather than focusing on a particular disease or a specific nutrient. Also, this brief re review does not include information about botanical medicines, pharmaceutical drugs, or the holistic and integrative clinical approaches that we use clinically with patients and which are detailed in my textbooks and seminars for doctors. This is simply a quick review of vitamin and mineral supplementation for the general purposes of health promotion and disease prevention. First article we're going to look at comes from the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2002. The authors of this article in particular are Fletcher and Fairfield, both of Harvard Medical School and Harvard uh, School of Public Health. This is an important article not simply because it supports and encourages the use of vitamin supplementation by adults and by physicians, but because it comes from two powerful organizations within medicine, again, Harvard's uh, Medical School and the School of Public Health. And the article was, of course, published by the American Medical Association, an organization which has traditionally been opposed to accepting the importance of nutrition and the benefits of nutritional supplementation. These authors write, Suboptimal intake of vitamins above levels causing classic vitamin deficiency is a risk factor for chronic disease and, and is common in the general population, especially the elderly. Most people do not consume an optimal amount of all vitamins by diet alone. Therefore, it appears prudent for all adults to take vitamin supplements. Physicians should ensure that they, their patients, are taking the vitamins that they should. Very good uh, summary here, and again, this is available from the Journal of the American Medical Association. A very positive change in the AMA's position on uh, multivitamin, multimineral use. And while this might not necessarily reflect the uh, position of the American Medical Association as a whole, the fact that it was published in, uh, the, in their journal, JAMA, uh, certainly indicates that things are changing. Next article we're going to look at comes from Robert Heaney, uh, medical doctor at Creighton University uh, Medical School. Dr. Heaney has uh, many very well, very respectable and uh, well-written and well-published um, articles on vitamin D, either review articles or clinical trials. So he writes here on what he calls long latency deficiency diseases, insights from calcium and vitamin D. Dr. Heaney writes, inadequate intakes of many nutrients are now recognized as contributing to several of the major chronic diseases that affect populations of the industrialized nations. Often taking many years to manifest themselves, these disease outcomes should be thought of as long latency deficiency diseases. Sometimes they come about by the same pathophysiologic mechanism that produces the index disease, but sometimes the mechanisms are completely different. Discerning the full role of nutrition in long latency multifactorial disorders is probably the principal challenge facing nutritional science today. The first component of this challenge is to recognize that inadequate intakes of specific nutrients may produce more than one disease, may produce disease, disease by more than one mechanism, and may require several years for the consequent morbidity to be sufficiently evident to be clinically recognizable as disease. Because the intakes required to prevent many of the long latency d disorders are higher than those required to prevent the index, uh, respective index nutritional deficiency disease, recommendations based solely on preventing the index disease, again, that means classic nutritional deficiency disease such as scurvy, uh, are no longer biologically defensive, uh, defensible. I think you'll recognize a common theme between uh, this second article and the first one, and that is both articles state that nutritional deficiencies are common in the general population, including Americans and members of other industrialized nations, and that the manifestations might take years uh, and might not present clinically as an acute illness, but rather contribute to a chronic illness, which, of course, then would be taken for granted as just a normal part of aging or as a normal part of the, the human disease spectrum. Uh, what both of these articles suggest is that a lot of these conditions might be attributed to, caused by, contributed to, uh, or otherwise ameliorated by nutritional supplementation, either as a preventive measure or as a therapeutic measure. 
Next article we're going to look at comes from Dr. Bruce Ames. Dr. Bruce Ames is one of the world's most respected researchers. He developed the Ames test for determining the cancer-causing potential of chemicals. Dr. Ames is currently a professor and researcher at University of California at Berkeley. This article in particular by Dr. Ames is a remarkably thorough review of the literature with 377 citations to other peer-reviewed biomedical publications. Uh, Dr. Ames and his colleagues in this article write, about 50 human genetic diseases due to defective enzymes can be remedied or ameliorated by the administration of high dose of the vitamin component of the corresponding coenzyme, which at least partially restores enzymatic activity. Several single nucleotide polymorphisms in which the variant amino acid reduces coenzyme binding and thus enzymatic activity are likely to be remediable by raising cellular concentrations of the cofactor through high dose vitamin therapy. So I realize that was a, a rather quick uh, restatement of their uh, abstract. But if we focus on the title of their article, let's look at that um, just for the sake of simplicity, uh, because that's that pretty much does summarize uh, the, the thrust of the article. High-dose vitamin therapy stimulates variant enzymes with decreased coenzyme binding affinity. So basically what Dr. Ames is saying is that through the proliferation of single nucleotide polymorphisms through the population, another way of saying that is these are relatively... Uh, common genetic defects that result in a defective enzyme being produced. Because that defective enzyme has an altered structure, it doesn't bind to its vitamin or nutritional cofactor as efficiently. Therefore, in order to have that, in order to have that vitamin-dependent enzyme work effectively, uh, we have to use high-dose vitamin supplementation in order to push that defectively or malshapen uh, enzyme to complete its physiologic role. So again, when people have genetic defects, that leads to often leads to genetic, uh, genetically derived defects in their enzyme function, and that enzyme function can be often restored uh, either fully or partially by high dose vitamin therapy. Next article we're going to look at, uh, also from Dr. Bruce Ames. This is called the Metabolic Tune Up: Metabolic Harmony and Disease Prevention. I probably just have time to read this quick summary. Uh, which states a metabolic tune-up is likely to have enormous health benefits, particularly for those with inadequate diets, such as many of the poor and the elderly, who need the improvement the most, although this is currently not being addressed adequately by the medical community. The issues discussed here highlight the need to educate the public and also the medical community about the crucial importance of optimal nutrition and potential benefits of something as simple and affordable as a multivitamin, multimineral supplement. Tuning up metabolism to maximize the human health span will require scientists, clinicians, and educators to abandon outdated paradigms of micronutrients, merely preventing deficiency disease, and explore more meaningful ways to prevent chronic disease and achieve optimal health through optimal nutrition. Next article is actually a clinical trial. This is a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized trial of nutritional supplementation in 231 young adult prisoners. The intervention included a multivitamin, multimineral supplement, and fatty acids in the form of GLA, gamma linolenic acid, usually from borage oil or evening primrose oil, and EPA and DHA from fish oil. EPA and DHA are icosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid, respectively. The method here was a double-blind study, and the conclusion was that antisocial behavior in prisons, including violence, are reduced by vitamins, minerals, and essential fatty acids with similar implications for those eating poor diets in the community. Pretty impressive article, and I hope that you'll take a little more time to look at the, um, the longer version of this presentation so that you get to uh, absorb, no pun intended, the importance of nutritional supplementation in this context, and that is that it actually does result in significant uh, psychosocial uh, improvements in functioning. Summary page here, mild, uh, mild vitamin deficiencies are common in the general population and do contribute to chronic disease. Vitamin deficiencies, especially when mild, can result in long latency deficiency diseases. High dose vitamin supplementation helps overcome genetic defects that result in altered enzyme structure. And high dose vitamin supplementation helps these defective enzymes work more effectively and efficiently. Daily multivitamin multimineral supplementation is an inexpensive way to help ensure that nutritional needs are met. And finally, nutritional supplementation with vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids has been shown to improve mood, intelligence, and psychosocial functioning, uh, according to several articles. This is important to each of us as individuals and as members of society as a whole. So I hope that you'll take a chance to uh, look at the extended versions of, these, of this presentation so that you can have access to um, more information on this important topic. Thank you.